Hey gals and guys, Bill Sky, the COBOL guy, back for a long-awaited COBOL video. And today what we're going to do is we're going to start talking about functions within the COBOL programming language. There's all kinds of definitions of functions. There's subroutines, there are procedures, inline procedures. We're just going to go ahead and, and, and start writing some code to show you how to do inline procedures first, and then we'll move on to functions, subroutines, we'll move on to external functions. So you have a function in a COBOL program that you want to call a function from another COBOL program without actually having it copying and pasting the code, source code, into your program, much like an object library that you might link in a C program. So we're going to do all that, but I'm going to separate them up into different, different videos just to make it shorter, easier, because this could take three three or six hours to go through all of this stuff I know ugh. but I'm a retired teacher I love teaching so let's get right to it okay so I've got my my Linux up here now again you could be doing this under Windows uh, msys2 no problem I'm just using uh, Linux just because it's simpler for me so I'm gonna go ahead and create a new project here and I'm gonna call this one I don't know, procedures, or no, let's call it functions 1A, because what we're going to do is we're going to do a thing called inline procedures today. So I'm going to go ahead and edit my COBOL program, and let's go ahead and fix some things up here. And it happens to be the 19th, I believe, of October. Okay. And I'm actually using Mint Linux, so I'm going to say Mint Linux. This isn't really necessary. Uh, I guess it is, but it, it's mainly just documentation. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is I want to talk about what we're seeing down here on the bottom of the procedure division. When you create a function or an inline procedure within COBOL, you need to give it a name. And the name is simply a, an identifier, like begin, with a period at the end. Now, one of, the, one of the standards in a lot of COBOL programming uh, shops is to begin it with some type of a number identifying that function. So the, the function 000 means that is the top level function, that is the top level procedure within that. Um, you might even see something like, something like this Where not only do you see the 000 begin, you might say 00 begin end. And then you might actually put the stop run in there and take get rid of it there. So it, it really is all based on what your COBOL programming shop requires you. And by shop, I mean the company that you're working for, what standards that they've put into place. But each one of these is a procedure name or a label 000-begin and 000-begin-end. Now why did I call it begin-end? Because this is the end of the 000-begin function. Because we don't really need any kind of an end. There's really no easily jump out at you identifier or way of seeing that that's the end of the function. What makes this the end of this procedure is this period right here on the stop run. And then here we've got the end program for our entire program. So I'm just going to go ahead and we're just going to, so that, that's a standard, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and do something here. I'm going to create, I'm going to use a, 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 a new uh, syntax called perform. Now perform is the same as call in some programming languages. It says, I want to perform something. And what you're going to do is you're going to perform everything within that paragraph. So in this case, I'm not going to call a function. I'm just going to create a block of code. This is like an open and close curly bra bracket in C or C++. So I'm just going to say display inside simple form. And this really is the, the simplest of performs or of functions that you could create. Still, and so I can put in multiple lines of code, and then down here, I'm gonna say end perform with a period. So again, this is kind of like, 
this, you're just simply creating a block of code. And these, these curly braces are not used in COBOL the way they're used in, in C, C, plus, C, C++, and Java. So they're meaningless in, for, for functions or for blocks of code. So this right here says I want to perform these two lines of code, and that's the end of my perform. So that's really, really simple. So I'm going to go ahead and save and build that. Now, have I ever seen anything like that before? I actually have. Um, I don't seem to remember any time that I've actually done that. But let's go ahead and make it, and let's run it, and you can see the you can see the uh, results of that. Again, this really isn't doing a lot. Now I might want to do something like this. I might want to say perform five times. And so this is where it could be useful, kind of like a loop. This is going to run it five times. And you can see that it executed that code. It executed that block five times. So it is good in the in the sense of a a a, a counting or a, yeah a counting loop. I've I've done that five times. You could have a any number of of uh, statements in there. It's like a for loop counting from one to five in this case five times. I could put anything in here a ten. I could put in variables in here, so I could say ls counter add one ls counter and then I could say display you are on loop ls counter. So you can see that it's, and it's not five, I changed this up here to 10. So you can see this is ex actually executed 10 times. Now ls counter by default was set with a value of zero up here in my working storage se section in the local storage section. So uh, I could have used this working storage counter right here if I wanted to as well. But you can put any number of statements in there. Okay, so I would call this an inline block of code. I don't think I would call it an inline procedure. I'm simply saying do this thing, to do all the code within there 10 times. Okay, so let's actually create our first real inline procedure or real function. It's not really a function, so I have to be careful. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say um, perform, and I'm going to give it a name. Now, I would really recommend that you not name your procedures or your functions, procedure one, procedure two. Name it something that's meaningful, okay, like calculate factorial, whatever it is that you're doing, give it a good name. In this case, I'm going to say 010 procedure. Now, why did I call it 010? Because it came from the, it, it came from the 000 procedure begin, so anything underneath it, it's almost like a hierarchical. Um, if I had something that was going to call... Uh, that that zero one zero procedure was going to call. I might call it one zero zero, and then some name. Again, it depends upon the shop. So there you go. So that's simply the call. Now let's actually write the code for that. So I'm going to do that down here. So I'm going to give it a name. Zero one zero procedure one. And I'm going to say display, I'm in, and I'm doing this just to show you the multiple lines of code. And that period right here ends the procedure. It ends the procedure 010 procedure 1. So let's put a space in there. Now, for those of you who don't know it, with no advancing means the display I'm in, display that string, but don't go to the next line. Stay on that line and then we'll print procedure one. All right, so let's go ahead and build that. And let's run it. Okay, so let's see what we've got. Uh, we did this counter, that was the previous one where we went from, zero, from one to 10. This is one where it says you are in loop zero one zero. 
or no, right here. I'm in procedure one. So this call called this procedure. Now, just to make things easy, I'm going to go ahead and comment out I wish I was using ISPF. It would be so much easier to do this. Okay, so we commented out, commented out that code and let's go ahead and just run the program and you can see that I'm in procedure one. Now I could actually do this perform 01 on procedure one five times if I'd like. Let's go ahead and build that and run it. There it goes, five times. I could add a counter just like we did in here into the procedure one. Okay, now, how would I really, I mean, I, I remember that I, we had that 010 procedure one, to, or no, we had the 000 begin to 000 begin end. Well, we can do the exact same thing here, and we're gonna talk a little bit about a change in our execution code, 010 procedure one end. And let's go ahead and build that. Whoop, forget my period at the end. Not much different than C++. All right, that's good. But I could say perform 010 procedure one through 010 procedure one end five times. Well, let's make sure we have that Forgot the D. So that means start at 010 procedure one and execute all of this code all the way through the end or the last statement in 010 procedure one end. So it starts it. So if I had something else in here, let's say if I had, and this is, would be very bad coding, if I said procedure two. This statement right here is going to execute from here through 010 procedure one end. So let's go ahead and make this. Let's run it. And you can see it right there. Really bad coding. Normally what you'll do is you'll just say what is the beginning of the first procedure, or in this case procedure one, and what's the end, and that's procedure one end. Again, you have to check out with the site uh, where you're working to see how they want you to do it. And there's your procedure one end. I also believe I could probably, the reason I'm having so many, pro so many problems here is because I haven't set up my genie editor to uh, change the uh, tab character to spaces. And the compiler doesn't like tabs. So what I've done here also is that I have commented out the, la the, the one line that was in procedure one end because I can have a label with zero statements in it. Let's see how this works. And it works fine. Now this said, um, this said, hello world, I'm in procedure one. So it looks like the zero one zero procedure, and oh, the reason why that happened was because I didn't fuck. So I've commented out this one line because we really don't want that. We just want to have an indication of what is the end of procedure one and it's the label 010 procedure one end. If I wanted to, I could probably put in the word go back and that is basically kind of like a return. So that kind of makes it a little bit more interesting as to what's kind of like Return, so it makes it more interesting as to what we're doing here. Let's go ahead and build that. And when I run it, well, that's interesting. Um, it says I'm in procedure one. Go back in this case might actually take us out of the program. And if you notice, it didn't say, now do I have that in there? Nope, it doesn't look like I have that in there. I could test this by saying display program ending 
as a nice day. And let's say if it actually gets back or if the go back takes us out of the program. Yep, so the go back actually returns us from the program. So you might want to leave that out, just maybe have a little comment there that says this is the end of the procedure block. And you can see that the procedure has run five times because I said perform O and O procedure one through O and O procedure one and five times. Now, one thing about inline procedures is that you can't really send any variables. Like I can't do something like, like I would do in C or C++ where I send it a variable like that. That just isn't done that way in COBOL. But inline procedures have complete access to all of these variables in the working storage section and even possibly the local storage section. It can access all those itself. So it, they're inline procedures within the same block of main block of code that has access to all those. So those are the global variables. So if I wanted to access them, I could. Okay, another thing that we can do is we can do something like using a variable to process the, the procedure. So there's this thing called varying. So let's kind of get away from this, this procedure and let's do this. Let's say this. Let's say perform varying. And I don't know, what do we have? We have, uh, what is a variable that we've got? WS underscore counter varying ws underscore counter from 1 to 10 until ws counter is less than or equal to, or no, not less than, counter is greater than or equal to 5. Kind of a complex uh, perform but let's say whoops, let's see what we've got. So I'm going to say display counter value is ws counter. And I'm going to say end perform. Okay, we have an issue here. Let's see what the problem is. Oh, I have a period here. I think it's this right here. So it'd be nice if we could do that, but we really can't. So we're gonna say from one, from from one until, or no, let's say from one by one until WS counter is greater than five. So the syntax got got me a little bit messed up there. So let's go ahead and make that. Let's run it. And you can see that the counter started at one because we said from one, by one, and until is the condition, until WS counter is greater than five. Now, if we didn't put anything in there, if we didn't put this there, I think we're gonna get an infinite loop. Yep, unexpected display, expecting until. So the compiler is pretty smart in this case, is that it sees that, hey, you're not giving me a limit. You're not telling me what the limit is. In this case, I want the limit to be five or I can make it 10. Uh, you might wanna be careful about something like that. Let's say negative one. I believe this will compile now, but we're gonna get a huge, well, I'm not sure what happened there. Oh, until it's greater than negative one. Okay, so it is greater than negative one. Um, so, the compiler's pretty smart. Greater than five. So we should get a little bit better output. There we go. So there's our one, two, three, four, five. So that's like a for loop counting up. I could also do this from 10 by negative one. So this is kind of like a, a, a for loop that's counting down is less than zero. And let's put a little display. So 
So we're going to count up, and then the next one we're going to count down. Um, oops, I think we might have a little bit of a problem here. It looks like we've got, we might have a, an infinite loop. Let me go ahead and see what I can do about this. Control C, there we go. So my logic is kind of bad there. So perform varying WS counter from 10 by negative one until WS counter is less than zero. Display counter value is, so let's take a look at the output. So yeah, interesting. So so perform varying WS counter from 10 by negative one until WS counter is less than, let's try this, or equal to zero. Got to get our logic right here, and that worked better. So it started at 10 and went to 1. So it counted down each one. So that's like a for loop counting backwards in Java and C and C++. Now, why did that actually happen? If I didn't say equal to 0, well, the reason why I needed to have equal to 0, less than, or equal to 0 is because if we look at WS counter, there's no sign. There's no sign in the picture. If we put an S there, or a V, oh uh, no, put an S, let's put an S there. Let's take out the less than or equal to zero. Let's just say zero. And you can see that it goes all the way down to zero, but you don't see a negative one because of this condition right here, less than zero. So you have to think about what is your comp, what is your counter look like? Does it have the ability to have a sign? If it doesn't, then it's going to be positive only, and it's just not going to work. So we had to add that other, that other, or we had to take away the equal to zero because our counter was unsigned. Now I could do this. So I could say perform, I could do something like this. I could say perform bearing WS counter from one to, t from one by one until WS counter is greater than five. And then I could say perform Procedure one. So this is an interesting little piece of code. So what I'm doing is I have an inline block of code which is going from one to five using WS counter as the counter variable. And within that, I'm going to perform 010 procedure one through 010 procedure one end. So we're going to see that executed five times. And you can see it right there. So there's our procedure one five times. So you can have a perform within a perform. Uh, you could also do something like this. I could call a perform I could do that within. Now notice I put a period there so I have to take away the period there. So I could actually call procedure 020 procedure 2 through 020 procedure 2 end and let's go ahead and, and put write that procedure in there. And I always like to have a little comment.
Yeah, I have to get this set up. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And from within here, I'm simply going to say display. And that's the end of that. All right, let's go ahead and build this. And now you can see that procedure one is calling procedure 20. Now, as I said earlier, you might want to name these a little bit different because this might be a procedure that's called from another procedure. So hierarchically, maybe that that number should be 100. It again, it depends upon how it's being used. If it's only going to be called from an 010 procedure, you might want to call it you might want to number it differently. Okay, um, now how can we use a procedure to process an array? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to create an array in my local storage section. Okay, so I just created a little array here called my array in my local storage section. It is a pick 93, so it's unsigned integer. It occurs 10 times, so there's going to be 10 pick 93 integers there, and it's indexed by a variable called my array counter that I don't actually have to define anywhere else. I'm it's simply automatically defined right there. So if you watch my array uh, video on COBOL, you might already have this. Okay. So let's go down and let us process this in another perform. So I'm going to say perform varying my array CTR. That's the counter that we created in the array from one by one until my array CTR is greater than nine. Now I could have said uh, is greater than 9, or I could use the greater than sign. I like doing it the long way. And then I'm going to simply say compute my array, my array CTR equals my array CTR times 22. I don't know. I'm just doing something here. And let's make sure we put the E there. And then I'm going to say display contents of array at my array CTR is my array, my array CTR. And then we'll say end perform. All right, let's save and build that. And it looks like we've got an error here, so let's take a look. So I think what might be happening here is that the compiler is having trouble with me using this variable in a display. So what I'm going to do to fix this problem, because if you notice, if you come up here, this variable really isn't defined anywhere. It's an index. It's not really something you can just print out. The compiler doesn't really know how to do that. It's just used for indexing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy it. I'm going to move it into a, into a variable that we've created. So I'm going to say move my array CTR to working storage counter. And then instead of printing my array CTR, I'm going to print, I'm going to print WS counter. Now I can still use my array CTR when I'm indexing an array. I just can't use it put just putting it into a display or trying to modify it. So I'm just going to, well, you could modify it, but it'll really mess things up. So when I do that, the problem goes away and the program works as specified or the loop works as specified. So we're, we're, so this is a nice little procedure that allows me to 
And it's not really a procedure, it's a block of code, it's a loop that allows me to process the contents of the array. I'm not actually calling a procedure there because I'm just performing this block of code, but I could if I wanted to. Now I spoke a little bit earlier about this whole idea of an 010 procedure one, 010 procedure one end, and the same thing here with 01 or 100 procedure two. One thing that you cannot do is that you cannot do something like this. I cannot say perform 010 procedure one end through 010 procedure one. I can say five times. And let's change that to the number five. So you can't really perform backwards. Now this is kind of ridiculous, right? I'm trying to perform this through this. I think the compiler might let me do that, but the execution will not be what I want. Now I'm going to get rid of that comment there so we can see when we're in procedure one end. So let's go ahead and make that. And it looks like it is not going to let me do it, which is kind of nice. Um, it says here, warning, 010 procedure 1 is defined before 010 procedure 1 end. Now, I do believe on an earlier version of this compiler, the compiler would let me do it, but all it would do was just execute this one line of code or this one block of code, and then it would end. Now, let's say you want to create a procedure that will actually do everything we did right here when we were processing the array. Well, I can do that, so I'm gonna copy that, and I'm gonna come down here, and I'm gonna call this one 010 procedure three, and I'm just gonna copy and paste to say N, and from within there, I'm going to copy the code that I did within this within this perform. And actually, I'm probably gonna go ahead and just copy all of this into my little procedure. And we definitely wanna get the indentation right. Okay, now, so, in, so now, anywhere within my program, I can call this to process the contents of the array. Now we might want to do this. We might want to also have a print procedure. And this is another good reason why you don't want to name these this way, but. Okay, and let's get rid of this display. So our first procedure three is simply going to create the contents of the array, and then the procedure four is just gonna print it. All right, so now instead of having this code up in here, I'm just gonna say perform 010 procedure three through 010 procedure three end, and then I'm gonna do the same thing with four. So we move those into that function or into that procedure. And now I can get rid of this. All right, let's see how this builds. Okay, looks like we've got a problem. Oh, still have this issue. Yeah, so we still have the issue where I was doing the end first. And let's run it. So it's a little bit confusing because I've got this five times in here. So let's go ahead and comment that out so we don't have all that noise in our output. All right, here we go. So what I did was I called 010 procedure 3, and then I called 010 procedure 4, and I did that with the perform statement. Within the procedure 3, I'm performing a group of code. I have a loop in there that will actually put, the, put data into that array. That's all procedure 3 does. And then procedure 4 
prints it out. And so that way I can call this anytime I need to. Let's say if I want to call this again there, I want to do it twice. No problem, I don't have to reproduce all that code. That's the beauty of functions, the beauty of procedures. And you can see it now did it twice. It now printed it twice. So you might want to put something in between here so you can see I'm going to try it once and try it a second time. So that's another good example of using procedures. All right, so that is your first, that's my first endeavor on teaching you procedures in COBOL. Uh, we use the GNU COBOL. This is a lot like IBM mainframe COBOL. It's a lot like microfocus COBOL. It pretty much all works about the same. So we're going to have additional videos on how to actually remove these functions and even allow you to send data to the function or even remove them and put them into an external library that you can then call from any program that you're writing in COBOL. So I hope to see you at those future videos.